Cusack Tunnel, Massachusetts, USA. The Hoosack Tunnel at North Adams claimed nearly 200 lives over the course of its 24 years in its construction. Many documented cases of hauntings have been recorded since the 1800s, many of them recorded in letters and other various documents. Here are the several haunting accounts of the Hoosack Tunnel in Massachusetts. You are watching Daily Horror. We bring you the gravest of horrors that lurk around in our world. Most of these horrors are around you, and you don't even pay attention. So, if you are thrilled by terror and consider yourself brave enough to face any dreadful situation, before we get into the details about the hauntings of the tunnel, there will be a quiz question during the course of this video, which is based on the contents. So make sure you watch until the end, and you stand the chance to win a gift card. Let's talk about how the tunnel and its eerie stories came into existence. The digging of this railroad tunnel is a saga of blood, sweat, and tears. The construction began in 1851, but wasn't finished until 1875. During those 24 years, hundreds of miners, using mostly crude black powder and picks, chipped away at the unyielding rock of the Huzak Mountain. By the time the tunnel was finished, 200 men had lost their lives in what came to be known as the Bloody Pit. Most died in explosions, fires, and drownings. But some of these deaths may not have been accidental. The Explosion In 1865, the explosive nitroglycerin was introduced to America and used for the first time in the construction of the Hoosac Tunnel. On the afternoon of March 20th, 1865, explosives expert Ned Brinkman, Billy Nash, and Ringo Kelly planted a charge of nitro and ran towards a safety bunker. Brinkman and Nash never made it. Kelly had prematurely set off the charge, burying his co-workers alive under tons of rock. Ringo disappeared after setting off the blast that killed the others, and a year later reappeared, strangled at the spot where Ned and Billy perished. After investigations, his estimated time of death was between midnight and 3.30 a.m. An investigation was carried out, but with no suspects, the murder was never solved. Some of the workmen, however, came to their own conclusion. They knew that Kelly had been killed by the vengeful spirits of Brinkman and Nash. Voices in the Tunnel After the Brinkman and Nash incident, the workers started complaining of hearing voices of men in agony and pain. Fearing that the tunnel was cursed, they drew back at entering it and this slowed down the work greatly. A mechanical engineer who was employed on the Huzak project toured the tunnel with a foreman of the project and gave accounts of their encounters at the tunnel in a letter to his sister back in Connecticut. In the letter, dated September 8, 1868, the engineer wrote, Last night the foreman and I entered the great tunnel at exactly 9 p.m. We traveled about two miles into the shaft and then stopped to listen. As we stood there in the cold silence, we both heard what truly sounded like a man groaning out in pain. Yet, when we turned up our wicks on our lamps, there were no other human beings in the shaft except the foreman and myself. I'll admit, I haven't been this frightened. The foreman agreed that it wasn't the wind Perhaps Nash or Brinkman, I wondered. The Headless Miner A month later, on October 17, 1868, the worst disaster in the tunnel's history occurred. Thirteen miners, dead in a gas explosion that blew apart a surface pumping station. Debris filled the central shaft where the miners were working. As their pumping station was out of use, 
The shaft soon became filled with water. Bodies of some of the dead miners surface. More than a year later, the remaining bodies were found on a raft the men had built to float on the rising water. Four years after the gas explosion, one of the drill operations, superintendents, gave the accounts of his encounter while in the tunnels according to him. On the night of June 25, 1872, a partner and I entered the great excavation at precisely 11.30 p.m. We had traveled about two miles into the shaft when we finally halted to rest. Except for the dim, smoky light casted by our lamps, the place was a cold, dark tomb. We stood there, talking for a minute or two, and were just about to turn back when suddenly I heard a strange, mournful sound. It was just as if someone or something was suffering great pain. The next thing I saw was a dim light coming along the tunnel from a westerly direction. At first, I believed it was probably a workman with a ladder. Yet, as the light grew closer, it turned on a strange blue color and appeared to change shape, almost into the form of a human being without a head. The light seemed to be floating along about a foot or two above the tunnel floor. In the next instant, it felt as if the temperature had suddenly dropped, and a cold, icy chill ran up and down my spine. The headless form came so close that I could have reached out and touched it, but I was too terrified to move. For what seemed like an eternity, my partner and I just stood there, staring at the headless thing like two wooden Indians. The blue light remained motionless for a few seconds, as if it were actually looking us over, then floated off towards the east end of the shaft and vanished into thin air. On October 16, 1874, a local hunter vanished. Three days later, a search party found him stumbling along the banks of the Deerfield River in a state of shock. Webster said that the strange voices had ordered him into the Hoosac Tunnel, and once inside, he saw ghostly figures wandering about. Suddenly, something seized his rifle from his hand and beat him over the head with it. When the searchers found the hunter, he had no weapons with him, and he couldn't recall leaving the tunnel. After the completion of the tunnel in 1875, a fire tender was driving a wagon load of firewood into the tunnel late one night. Suddenly he turned, whipped the horses across their flanks, and sped out of the tunnel. A couple of days later, workmen found the wagon in the woods three miles from the tunnel. The fire tender was never seen or heard from again. In 1976, a pair of psychologists from Guam, Massachusetts visited the tunnel and claimed to see the figure of a man wearing old-fashioned work clothes. The man appeared within the glowing white light. Could it have been the apparition that was seen 104 years earlier? Although today's visitors to the area may be tempted to enter the tunnel, Doing so will come with a great risk, because the Boston and Maine Railroad runs a dozen or more freight trains through the tunnel every day. Do you believe this tunnel is truly haunted? Do you live around North Adams and have had experiences from this tunnel? Let us know in the comment section. We enjoy getting your feedback. Now for the quiz question. What year was the Hoosac Tunnel completed? First five correct answers will be rewarded with Amazon gift cards. We look forward to your submissions. Be sure to like and share this video. Also, check out our other videos from the channel. We sure have some content that will get you spooked. Till we come your way again, stay spooked. Coming up on the next episode, Daily Horror brings you the facts about the suicide inciting demon from South Dakota.
The Walking Sam. Be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss out on our next exciting episode.